morning. <laughs> Greetings to all. There are some people that uh, continue to make their way into the sanctuary. You're welcome to come all the way to the front. <laughs> yeah. I see, I see Jana's uh, parents. You can come on all the way to the front. <laughs> the, cold, Terrell cold and Jana are up here. <laughs> Uh, our annual meeting is coming up in two weeks' time. Uh, the, the report books were sent electronically on Friday. There are also a few uh, hard copies available uh, in preparation for our meeting in a couple weeks. If you would like to grab a hard copy in the foyer after the service. Today is a special day for our church family. Today, we get to complete a triple play. Three things, three uh, wonderful things happening. The first is we'll welcome Terrell and Jana as new members into our fellowship, uh, our church family. Uh, the second is that we will covenant with Terrell as he begins his new ministry. Uh, in our midst as our associate pastor for youth ministries. And then the third will complete the triple play by uh, granting Terrell a license. Uh, the credential we will grant to him along with Mennonite Church Manitoba is licensing toward ordination. It is not always the case that when a, when a pastor begins a new role that they are licensed at that time. Uh, but as we discerned, our church leadership discerned and conversed with Terrell and Mary Church of Manitoba, we felt this was the right step in light of the experience uh, that Terrell brings into our midst. And so we're celebrating uh, this day that we have a new pastor and also a granting to Terrell a credential uh, as we enter a period of discernment that may lead to ordination for him. We have also gathered to do the, uh, the work of worship. And so I invite us to begin our service this day in song as we sing All Who Are Thirsty.
Good morning. Welcome to everyone here in person, to the many guests that I see, and to those who are watching at home. It's very good to take time out of our busy lives to turn our thoughts to God and to community. And as we gather this morning, we acknowledge that we meet on the ancestral land of Indigenous and Métis people, and may we gather with humility, gratitude and dedication to healing relationships with our neighbours as a witness to God's overflowing love for all of us. We are on Sunday number three of a four-part worship series where we are exploring this question, what is God like? What are the characteristics of God? And today we reflect on God's holiness and the holiness of love. We also gather together in joy as we covenant with Terrell and his new role as uh, our youth pastor. And we welcome both Terrell and Jenna as members of our ABC family. This is a good day. It's a day of growth and a day of blessing. Let us pray. Source of all hope and holiness, we gather this morning to be church. Show us how to bring your presence to others. Free our hearts, our hands, our voices to confess Christ, to give people the reason for the hope that is in us. Glory be to you, O God, as you took the form of a servant, you preached peace, you healed the oppressed, you died for us. We will tell the world of your love. And now bless those who are absent, but not from your hearts. Bless those who are distant, but not from your love. Bless each of us here that we may choose justice by your spirit and draw kindness from the well of your mercy and walk humbly in your path, O God. Amen. And now please rise if you are able to sing, Holy God, we praise thy name. The words will be on the wall.
today we're going to combine our ABC conversation with dropping a new member. We had a chance to get to know Carol in the MBA this year in December, uh, and we will continue to get to know her through the teaching and so forth, but we haven't had a chance to get to know Jana, so we're going to get to know Jana a bit. <laughs> Uh, so, Jana, first tell us where you're from and how you uh, got to this place living in Gretna. Hello, good morning. Um, yeah, I was born and raised in Strathclair, Manitoba, which is in western Manitoba. And uh, right on the 16 Highway, my parents still live there. And uh, I went to school there. I was raised in Strathclair Baptist Church, where I was baptized. Um, and after high school, I wasn't sure wh what I wanted to do at university. My friend and I went to a, cr to a university fair, saw CMU was there with their Out of Town booth, watched the Out of Town video, the promo video, like three times, and we're like, yeah, we want to do that. So my best friend and I applied for the South Africa program, and miraculously both got in, and that was an incredible year, and Cheryl... Uh, was in the same group as me. That's how we met. From there, I went to CMU um, and got a, a... What kind of degree did I get? <laughs> got a degree. <laughs> I had three hours of sleep last night. I have a sick kid at home. Um, so it's a little... Uh, and, uh, and after that, uh, Carol and I got married. I, I pa youth pastored um, for one year at First Mennonite Church. Um, uh, and then Carol and I pastored together at Springfield Heights Mennonite Church for six years. Um, we came, then we moved to Gretna when we had the call there, and, and we pastored there together for four years. Tell us one uh, really important moment or experience in your journey of faith. You also had said slash influence, so that's the angle I went, Mark, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all good. Um, <laughs> when I was thinking about this, um, somebody for me um, who was very influential in my faith journey has been, uh, was my grandma, my dad's mom, who uh, lived for almost 100 years. She passed away at 98. I don't expect that I will live that long because she was a superwoman. But she had an unwavering faith and trust in Jesus, um, was dedicated to the church, was a prayer warrior. I don't think I ever received a birthday card that didn't say much love and many prayers um, from her. And I shouldn't have looked at my dad because now I feel emotional. Sheesh. Um, and she, I mean, 100 years almost she lived. The world changed so much in 100 years' time. And um, she just remained a steadfast, loving person who loved people and, and knew that Jesus loved them and, and let that influence her life. So I... Hope that that influences my life as well. And we're doing a series now on images, yes. characteristics of God. What is one image or characteristic of God that is important for you at this time? Um, I've always been drawn to the parable of the lost sheep. So for me, um, God as a shepherd, and that's because shepherds don't uh, have a glamorous life. The sheep live in the field, sleep in the field, are vulnerable to the elements to pray, and the shepherd sleeps in the mud with the sheep um, to protect the sheep. The shepherd doesn't live a glamorous life, but lives in the muck and in the mud and in the dark of the night with the sheep. And that's always, for me, a comforting image of that Jesus is, is there, walks closely with us through even the mucky, dark mm. parts of life. Hmm. And now tell us about your work. Hmm. Yes, I work at Mennonite Collegiate Institute in, uh, in Gretna, and I love it. I started out in reception and doing a bit of student life, and then I filled in for a mat leave after my mat leave doing communications, so doing the website, social media, and stuff like that. And right now my role is like my favorite parts of both of those jobs in one. I'm in the library, which I consider a very sacred space on campus where students come to relax, to sleep sometimes, to have conversations they think that other people can't hear, but they talk really loudly so I can hear them. 
Um, so it's a safe space, I think, for a lot of our students, especially some of our students who struggle. Um, and so to be part of that safe space was very special and meaningful for me. I also am in charge of chapel coordination. We have a daily 25-minute chapel as part of our school day, and that is my role as well, which I think um, my giftings in pastoral ministry have set me up um, to do okay at. So, yeah, I love it. So it sounds like you are a jack-of-all-trades, <laughs> master of them all. I used to, well, when I first got hired at MCI, they, somebody called me the Jana of all trades because of well, wow, everything of I was asked to do. So I'll, I'll take that. Yeah. Thank, <laughs> thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. Come on up, Terrell. Uh, we're welcoming Terrell and Jana from the Gretna Bergtaller Mennonite Church. We received a recommendation and endorsement from that community, uh, and it is an honor to welcome you as part of our church family. I'll ask you too. Uh, to affirm the faith that we hold in common and that in your lives with us you will strive to love God, to follow Jesus, and to abide with the Holy Spirit. We, we do. We do. <laughs> uh, and will you share in the ministry the work that God has called us to as a congregation? We will. Wonderful to hear. <laughs> and now let's share our words of commitment to Terrell and Jana. Uh, join me in sharing these words with them. Terrell and Jana, we welcome you with joy as companions on the journey of faith. We commit ourselves to fellowship and worship, service and witness as partners in God's mission. We receive you as Christ has received us. Amen. And so on behalf of your new church family, with his right hand of Koinonia <laughs> Fellowship, I welcome you as members Thank into you. the Altona Briggs Holler Mennonite Church. <laughs> now, I did want to share a blessing for your children. One of them is at home sick. One of them, I think, left the room. Okay. Yeah. We'll, have, we'll have to do that another time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I will share this with you. This is a prayer shawl. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, this, this was knit by a woman from our congregation. Uh, it is, this one is for Jana. Um, this is a, a sign of our support, our fellowship, and our prayers. Uh, and so I share it with you on behalf of our community. And Daryl, you don't get one just yet. You'll have to wait a little bit longer to get your prayer <laughs> shot. Okay. All right. Thank you. Jenna, you can return there. Terrell, we have more work to do. And so I'll invite Jeff Friesen from Manitoba Church of Manitoba and others who are involved to come forward. Greetings. Uh, as Mark said, my name is Jeff Friesen. Uh, I work in the Mennonite Church Manitoba offices as the co-director of leadership ministries, uh, I sh a position I share with Karen Schellenberg, who I believe uh, many of you know here. And it is my pleasure to bring you greetings on behalf of the 39 congregations covenanted together to form our Mennonite Church Manitoba body uh, to this morning. Uh, triple play, I think that was a nice way to start. Uh, as a baseball fan myself, it is always nice to come to Altona knowing I'm, I'm a little bit with my people. And in fact, uh, the highlight of my life, actually, or at least the peak of my life, came when I was five years old and I uh, successfully completed an unassisted triple play. Um, so let's hope this morning's triple play lives up to that reality as well. We've gathered in God's presence to establish and express the covenant being made this day between Terrell Weeb 
and the Altona Berktaller Mennonite Church. Terrell is responding to Christ's call and this church's call as he offers himself to serve as associate pastor of youth ministries. Likewise, you as a congregation are responding to Christ's invitation as you call Terrell to ministry in your midst. As a congregation, we have discerned that Terrell is the person that God has called to be our associate pastor for youth ministry. We recognize Terrell's experience, education, and calling to ministry, and we celebrate that Terrell has said yes to our invitation. I invite you to join me. The words will be up on the screen. They are, right? There we are. Terrell, Terrell we promise, promise to receive, to receive your, your wisdom, wisdom and offer you counsel for the benefit of our lives together. To respect you as a leader in this community of faith and endure with you in times of disagreement. To support your leadership with prayer and resources and bless you in gratitude, grace, and hope for the ministry we share. I pledge with you to seek first the reign of God and discern the leading of the Holy Spirit, to follow the way of Jesus and grow into the mind of Christ, to love God and love our neighbors, to study the scriptures prayerfully and give thanks through all things for the steadfast love and mercy of God. To the best of my ability, with God as my strength, I will serve as pastor. We are delighted to welcome Terrell to our pastoral team and to share in the task of leading and shepherding our church family. We will support and encourage Terrell's ministry as we receive his support and encouragement so that we may each grow as ministers of the gospel in our different roles. Having heard the words of covenant from the congregation, from Terrell, and pastoral colleagues, it is my joy to speak words recognizing Terrell's ministry. Terrell, together with God, we are witnesses to your covenant today, and we are participants with you in this covenant and your ministry. In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit and the Church, I install you to serve as Associate Pastor for Youth Ministry of the Altona Berktaller Mennonite Church. May the blessings of God be upon you and fill you with grace, wisdom, and love. Amen. And now we'll share the prayer shawl with Tara. Terrell, may this prayer shawl be a sign of our prayers uh, and support that we will always share with you as your church community. And we will have a time of prayer for Terrell later in the service. Don't forget the prayer shawl for the time of prayer. Yeah. Let us pray together now for the church, the world, and to receive the offering. God, today we come together to know you more fully. We sit in wonder of your holiness and marvel that you came to us as fully human. Our minds cannot fully understand, but our hearts can sit in the mystery and find comfort in your ultimate love for us. Today your love shows up as we expand our community and welcome a new pastor and family. We look forward with grateful hearts and minds to what the future holds. We are also thankful for Ed Dell's successful surgery. Please be with Ed and Erna and their families as Ed continues his healing journey. We pray for Shirley Taves in hospital and for all, of, all other people needing care and for those providing care. 
God, may we all find peace in your love for us, for those who are hurting in physical pain, in emotional pain, for those struggling with loss of a family member, a friend, a relationship. Lord, our hearts hurt for the people of Turkey and Syria as they recover from a devastating earthquake. We cannot fathom what they are going through. Please be with the people and the organizations that rise up to help individuals who are dealing with this kind of devastation, trauma, and an unknown future. For those who live in areas of conflict, for those dealing with financial insecurity, we pray for a spirit of generosity among us as Christ followers. God, stir always within us a spirit of empathy for others, both near and far. Let us seek for ways to bridge the many divides we may feel. We are broken, but we know you came to mend our brokenness with your love. May we seek to be holy as you are holy. May we seek to meet people where they are, just as your son did. And now as we prepare to receive the offering, we know that our giving proclaims that work and worship are one, that life is undivided, and please use these gifts for your church's ministries of reconciliation, service, and mercy. Amen. Now I invite the ushers to come forward to receive the offering, as well as the children to come forward to receive the children's offering. And after that, we'll have a story. is kind of a word that's like imagine and this morning I would love it if you guys could use your imaginations with me sometimes we bring books or pictures or videos but this morning I want you guys to use your imagination do you know what that means to use your imagination yeah so think in your head what does this look like 
So today's Bible story has three different characters. The first character I meant to ask somebody about the pronunciation, but I'm going to say Uzziah. That's the king. It's going to be a King Uzziah. Then there's a man, and his name is Isaiah. Uzziah, Isaiah. Kind of similar. And then God. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a description to help you imagine what these characters look like. So first of all, King Uzziah. Um, he was a king. So imagine what you think a king might look like. And he was a good king. So what a good king might look like. And this good king tried to follow God as best as he can. And he wanted the people in his country to also follow God. So he was that kind of a good king. Now imagine a man named Isaiah. And this man really liked King Uzziah. So he liked him so much because he thought, he's a really good king. He believes in God. He tries to follow God. And so do I. And so I think he's a wonderful king. Have you ever had somebody in your life, we're going to turn your imaginations off for a little while, and think reality. Is there somebody in your life that you think, wow, that's an awesome person? Like maybe somebody who's famous, and you think, oh, they're really good at this, or they're really good at that. I asked my daughter if she could help me think of somebody who kids might think was famous, and she said, how about Spider-Man or Iron Man? I don't know. I don't know who you guys think is famous anymore, but maybe there's a singer or a musician or a superhero, someone who's super, super famous. Well, that's how Isaiah, back to your imaginations, that's how Isaiah thought of King Uzziah. Like he was a superstar, superhero. That's what kind of king he thought he was. And he just loved him. He thought he was the greatest king in the world. All right. Get ready. Now we need your superpower imagination, because this is the hard part for me. This is a very interesting part of the Bible story. Now, it says, God showed himself to Isaiah. Isaiah is the man. God is showing himself to Isaiah. I'm going to have to read this. So Isaiah saw God high and exalted, and God was wearing a robe. So sometimes I think of a robe as maybe a cloak or a cape, like a superhero cape. I don't know. Use your imagination. What do you think this robe would look like? And this robe had a train that was so long. Now, we're not talking a train that goes choo-choo. This means how long the robe was. This robe was so long, it filled the entire temple. A temple is like a church. That's how long and flowing God's robe was. It filled the entire temple. And above them were seraphs. I know, right? So at first I didn't Google seraph because I wanted to use my imagination. So these seraphs had six wings. What? What? I know. This is really hard for my imagination. And they said these six wings, two of the wings were covering their eyes, two of the wings were covering their feet, and two of the wings they used to fly. And these seraphs were flying and they were calling out to each other. And you know what they were saying? They were saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of God's glory. And as these seraphs were flying and calling out to each other, holy, 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 the temple doors were shaking and the temple filled with smoke. Whoa. Can you imagine that? I, my head is having a hard time imagining that. Those are hard, hard things to imagine. Sometimes the Bible has complicated things in there. And I think the purpose is not that we have to know exactly what this looks like, because it's really hard to imagine. 
I think the purpose of this is to let us know how special, how exciting, how amazing, and how holy who is. God. And the Bible also calls God a king sometimes. And so God wanted to show Isaiah, the man, how holy and amazing and special God was. That maybe, maybe King Uzziah, who was a really, really, really great guy, but who's even greater? God. God is even greater. God is the most amazing, the most greatest, the most wonderful everything, right? Yeah. There's no one better than God. God is just the best. So Isaiah was so lucky to be able to see God. And we're so lucky that Isaiah told this to other people and it got written in the Bible so we could hear about this as well these amazing stories and these amazing visions and some of the ways that people saw what God looked like. Very, very cool. All right, now this vision, I just want you to remember, was a reminder for Isaiah from God that even though King Isaiah was dead, God was still the king of everyone and everything. King Uzziah might have been a really good king, Maybe really famous, maybe awesome, but no king would be as awesome or as great or as holy as our God. All right, let's pray. God, thank you so much that you love us. Thank you so much that you will be our king forever, that you're always there for us no matter what. We want to praise you and worship you only. And thank you for people like Isaiah in the Bible who shared their stories with us so we could get to know you better. We know that you are holy and amazing and that you love us. Help us to share this love with the people and the world around us. Amen. Thanks for coming up and thanks for using your imaginations with me. Please stand if you are able. Today's reading comes from Isaiah 6, verses 1 to 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, 
I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were, and they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and live among people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. When he... With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. And now I invite Pastor Mark to share the message with us. Growing up once, I was playing a game of Monopoly with some cousins and my grandma, and it got really exciting. And so there were various exclamations, and at one point I had uttered the words, holy cow, and my grandma, in a very loving, very gracious way, asked me not to use those words. For as she uh, had learned growing up, holiness was an attribute, a characteristic of God, and so uh, the word holy was not to be used in a careless way, particularly uh, attached to animals or the other various words we might utter uh, as exclamations. Uh, as a child, I chafed at this sanctimoniousness of my grandma. But she had learned something important which was that God is holy. This is a theme spoken of consistently throughout the scriptures. The holiness of God is one of those core attributes of God. The, the Old Testament word holy is derived from the verb that means to cut or to separate. To be holy means to be, to be separate, to be set apart. Not set apart in an accidental or coincidental way, as in what's holy is over here and what's unholy happens to be over there, but to be holy is to be set apart in a fundamental way, a way that's core to truth and reality. When we say God is holy, we are saying God is set apart. Set apart in goodness, set apart in power, set apart in abilities. That God is beyond our comprehension or understanding. That God cannot be contained. That God is free in a way beyond mere human freedom. God is set apart and unique. In the Old Testament, there were many laws, some ceremonial, some having to do with diet and, and eating, what's appropriate to eat, 
some having to do with the priesthood and the sacrifices, all of these laws communicated and enacted the, the holiness of God. The people of Israel were chosen by God, and as such as it says in the, books of, uh, in the book of Exodus, you are called to be a holy nation and a royal priesthood. And because of Israel's special relationship with God, they also had an expectation of holiness. The best way to understand uh, the way this holiness functioned in the life of the people is to consider the tabernacle. The tabernacle was constructed with an outer courtyard, and Israelites could enter the tabernacle and offer sacrifices in the tabernacle, in the courtyard of the tabernacle. But in the tabernacle itself, only the priests could enter the tabernacle itself to offer sacrifices after various uh, purifications and so forth. But then at the center of the tabernacle, it was the most holy of place, places called the Holy of Holies, and only the high priest, one day a year, could enter the Holy of Holies. And so there are circles of holiness, boundaries that enact for the people the holiness of God. And there was a great danger of transgressing these boundaries of holiness. And there are examples of people in the Old Testament who are killed because they touch uh, something that's too holy to touch or, or get too close to something that's holy. Because God's holiness is a fundamental characteristic of reality that should not be toyed with, cannot be overcome. If we recognize God as holy, it has implications for us. It means we try also to be holy, as the one who called us is holy, but we also don't seek to overcome that set-apartness of God by trying to do the things that are God's as though we were God, as though we were holy in the same way that God is holy. In generations past, we enacted this sense of holiness in how we dressed. Now, anyone who's wearing jeans here today, I'd like you to stand up. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we didn't tell the visitor that he's not supposed to wear jeans. So, a couple generations ago, Wearing jeans to church would have been taboo because jeans were understood as work clothes. And this is a place of worship. And so to wear the clothes of work to the place of worship was a kind of breaking of the boundaries of holiness. Uh, I was speaking uh, to a member one time of the, of the church where I used to be a pastor in Winnipeg, we had a judge who was a, who was a part of our church community. And a few of us were talking, we were joking with the judge about the clothes that he had to wear when he presided uh, in a courtroom. The, uh, the, the robes and all the, all the fancy judge attire and the clothes that the, the clerks of the court have to wear and the ceremonies in a courtroom and so forth. And we were kind of joking about this as a, as a relic of, uh, of, of a previous time. 
And the judge said, what happens in a courtroom is of tremendous significance because people's lives are at stake. The verdict that a judge pronounces impacts many lives, even society at large. And so it's vitally important in a court of law uh, that the truth is told, that the truth is believed, that trials are fair, that judgments are just. And the special clothes that judges wear and the ceremonies that take place in a courtroom signal to people how important and how critical what takes place in this room is. And then it made me think about this place. Is this place also not a place of great significance? Where lives are at stake? Where we declare allegiance to Christ and his kingdom? Is this not a matter of ultimate significance? And it made me understand the old mentality that many people continue uh, to, to do, to, to put on your Sunday best. Because what happens here really matters. And it made me think about my, my grandma and her understanding of God's holiness and how the language that she expected of herself uh, and, and others was a signal of something really important, the holiness of God. And as our expectation of, of, of dress and language has shifted, we've lost some of these clues that remind us that God is holy. Now, we must also consider Jesus. For Jesus also, he lived in a way that challenged some of the holiness expectations. When Jesus touched people who were unclean because of skin diseases, when he healed a woman who was bleeding, uh, he was acting in ways that contradicted holiness. When people said to Jesus, Jesus, what's the deal? Your disciples don't wash their hands before they eat. And Jesus said, oh, it's not, it's not those things that make you unclean. It's not what you eat, but it's the matters of the heart. It's the sins of the heart that make us unholy. It's not that Jesus discounted the holiness of God. The New Testament quotes the book of Leviticus. There's a common refrain in the book of Leviticus that says, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. And the New Testament upholds that. But Jesus, instead of canceling the understanding of God's holiness, Jesus perfects our understanding of holiness. Jesus teaches us that holiness is perfected with love. Jesus understood how sometimes the expectations of holiness could cause harm to people, could exclude people. Which is why Jesus was okay demonstrating love by touching people who were unclean. So often we are preoccupied, uh, humans are preoccupied with preventing what we consider as a contaminant to pollute that which is holy. But Jesus teaches us 
that in fact, it's not pollutants that are contagious, it's holiness that is contagious. That holy, the holiness of God is overflowing in this world. It's poured out in love. Just as the seraphim had sang, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. The whole earth is full of his glory. When Isaiah encounters God in the temple, it's such a remarkable vision. The whole temple is filled with uh, the hem of God's robe, and the seraphs are flying around singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. And in the face of such holiness, all that Isaiah can do is say, woe is me. I am not worthy. I live among a people who are not worthy. And then the, one of the seraphs takes a burning coal and touches Isaiah's mouth and says, your, your guilt is taken away, your sin is atoned for. We are each invited to experience the holiness of God. A holiness that is perfected in love, just as love itself is holy. Aren't the most holy moments, moments of love? Today, as a congregation, we'll grant our new pastor, Terrell, uh, the license toward ordination. And one of the reasons that the church does ordination of pastors and grants these credentials, in this case, licensing toward ordination, is because of the holiness of the call. One cannot do ministry if we do not stand in the holiness of God. If we don't have an Isaiah-like experience where we recognize we are not worthy. We do not have what it takes on our own. We rely on the love and the mercies of God. We will ask Terrell to do such holy things as bake without a recipe with the youth, as they did last week. Play silly games, goof around, uh, teach about the scriptures, nurture the lives of our young people as disciples of Jesus. These are deeply holy matters insofar as they are expressions of love. For holiness is love, and love is holiness. Now, leadership is vital in the congregation. But good leadership does not absolve a community of the responsibilities that are entrusted to us. And just as Terrell and us as pastors stand in a holy calling, we all stand as a community called to be holy, called to love one another, and love the world, called to be a community that nurtures one another, in which we grow as disciples of Jesus. This is what we do today as we call Terrell to ministry in our midst. And may we each experience this day a love for the holiness of God and also the holiness of love itself. Amen.
Let's stand to sing um, Holy Santo. We're going to sing it three times, once in English, then Spanish, do your best, and then in English. From the time of Moses and Aaron onward, the people of God have been intentional about the ways in which they call people to ministry. This is what we've been hearing of already this morning as we talk about the holiness of God and the ways in which the prophet Isaiah experienced that holiness. It's also a legacy that we see imprinted in the very fabric of our Mennonite Church Manitoba community. It's not lost on me that uh, today we are gathering and calling, in, calling to ministry Terrell Weeb and granting him a license, something that has been previously done by Charleswood Mennonite Church for myself when they called for my ordination in 2011. Sargent Avenue Mennonite Church, who did the same for Mark Thiessen Dick, and this place, who, which called for the ordination of Virginia. This is what the church does. And in fact, this is what the church is doing today in many congregations in our regional body. Calling and locating pastors. Karen Schellenberg, for example, is uh, currently worshiping with the folks at Douglas Mennonite Church as they are installing Toby Veith as their new children's ministry leader. Yesterday, she was at, at uh, Grace Mennonite in, in Brandon, where they were doing a service of release for Ken Quiring. At Emmanuel this morning, and all throughout the weekend, they've been having a candidating week weekend. For they are preparing and wondering and discerning whether or not to call Lois Bucher to ministry there as their new co-pastor. Erica Ensrudin, that mysterious figure sitting just right over there, <laughs> is being called to ministry at the Altona Mennonite Church, having completed years of ministry at First Mennonite in uh, Winnipeg. This is what the church does, and this is what we are doing today. The license we are granting Tarot this morning is licensing towards ordination. 
This is a specific credential that is time-specific and location-specific. I know other words than specific, by the way. Uh, with the intention that we want to, as this local congregation and the wider Mennonite Church Manitoba community, grant Terrell space to discern his own sense of call and with the hope that it may lead to ordination. This is usually a two-year process that involves a variety of things for Terrell. He will be soon meeting with Mennonite Church Manitoba's Ministerial Leadership Committee, uh, which is uh, chaired by Aaron Morash uh, in, and is led a little bit by me uh, and features folks from different parts of our community, including Harold Schlegel uh, from this congregation. Uh, the per one, of the, one of the purposes of this community is to administer and tend to the licenses held by Mennonite Church Manitoba. So we'll be having a conversation with Terrell to get a sense of his own understanding of call and what it means to minister uh, a local congregation such as Altona Berktaller. Out of that will come some recommendations from that committee as to what we want Terrell to do and to work on in this two-year interim period uh, before ordination. It also requires some things of you. It is no small thing to call someone to ministry. And it is a dangerous and risky thing as well. There have been times in which congregations have called folks to ministry and not tended to that calling well themselves. You will be asked to give Terrell time and space for study, to give time and space for discernment. And this could take on a variety of different forms. But ultimately, it is a hopeful and joyous thing. What we are doing together today is being explicit in the ways in which we have seen Terrell called into ministry before and the ways we hope he continues to live out that calling here at ABC. And so let, we will proceed now to grant that ordination, that credential, on to Terrell. I'll invite him up. The licensing towards ordination ceremony has three main components. A presentation, which begins with an acknowledgement of the holiness that we all encounter as we minister to the gospel of Christ together, but also then how we see that taking place within the person of Terrell. Following that presentation, I will ask Terrell some questions. And just so he knows, the answers are, I do, it is, and then I will. I do, it is, I will. Following this, we will have a prayer of blessing, which incorporates all of us again. The presentation. When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. That comes from Matthew 9, verses 36 to 38. All who heed the call from the Lord of the harvest and enter the covenant of baptism become Christ's ministers. All receive the Spirit. All are given gifts. Through the Spirit, God continues the call to call people to the gift of ordained ministry. Spiritual receptivity and practice in the day-to-day -day tasks of ministry are necessary to test and to reinforce someone's sense of call. We gather here today because we believe that God is drawing Terrell to ordained ministry. The years ahead will be a time of testing to see if you, Terrell, are willing and able to follow this path. 
to see if this set-apart ministry is the one to which God and the church is indeed calling you. The congregation in our regional church have confirmed your sense of call and promised to join you in this time of discernment. As you faithfully pursue the purpose you here affirm, you will become more certain of God's will for your life. And so I ask you these questions. Terrell, do you renew your baptismal vow, claiming Christ's grace, offering him your, your obedience? I do. Is it your desire to serve God according to God's will for you? It is. Do you affirm your devotion to Christ's church and mission? Will you seek to grow in faithfulness to it, guided by the Holy Spirit and Scripture, in the company of this congregation and the churches of Mennonite Church, Manitoba? I will. Nice. I'll invite you. We'll come down here, and I believe some folks will be gathering around Terrell as well, and we'll Use, this is when you can have the prayer shawl on you. Yes. Yeah, Wrapped we're going to have a, a prayer circle here for Terrell, and I know some people are going to be speaking prayers on behalf of the congregation. So we'll make sure this prayer shawl. Yeah, and those who are praying, or anyone who wants to come and join family who wants to come near as well, this is the time to come. And I invite, the, actually, the, if the congregation can rise for this time as we pray together. Lord of creation, Lord of the church, we bless you for the gifts you give to all whom you have made and which you call forth through your spirit for the sake of your reign here on earth. <laughs> Loving, gracious God, we are thankful for our youth program here at ABC. And we are thankful that you have spoken into Terrell's heart and that he is part of the program here. Let us as parents, be an encouragement and support to him. Fill Terrell with wisdom, joy, and compassion as he adds to our kids' faith journey. God, we are grateful for Terrell, for Jana, Rowan, and Ivan. Um, help us to know how to best show them our love and support. Thank you that they are with us. God, I want to thank you for this day, for this opportunity for us to gather together in worship and especially uh, to gather and celebrate the joining of Terrell and Jana to our church family. Thank you for calling them to us. Thank you for calling them and giving them hearts um, ready to serve, especially our young people, the next generation of our church. I pray that you would fill Terrell and Jana just with your strength, with your peace, um, with your imaginative way of reaching young people. As Pastor Mark said, lives are at stake here, and I just pray that Terrell would pursue our young people's lives with a fervor and um, just with immeasurable um, compassion and understanding for the world our young people are growing up in and just give him your grace and your mercy to extend out to our children. We thank 
you, God, for your work in Terrell's life. Grant Terrell a discerning spirit. Grant him confidence and joy in your call. And may you grant him creativity and imagination and hope in all things. And may we as a congregation, may we be constant in support, gentle in our criticisms, prayerful in all things. We ask in the name of Jesus, our servant and Lord, who calls us to this work and makes us a church. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Closer. Uh, not that close. <laughs> the reason being, Terrell, I extend to you the right hand of fellowship. You are licensed to the Christian ministry for this congregation in the name of the triune God, three persons sharing in one spirit. Amen. Terrell, may you preach the word. Offer the ordinances of the church and bear witness in word and deed to the good news of Jesus. And may the God of peace sanctify you entirely. May your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And may you be filled with the love of holiness and the holiness of love. Amen. And now as we prepare to go from this place with joyful hearts, let's rise one more time together. Please rise for the benediction and remain standing for the final song. Guide us, O Lord, by your word and Holy Spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.